Hey everyone, so in this green recording I'm going to show you some basic uh, aspects of the visualization. So this is kind of like the starter video for any of the other videos. If you want to dive deeper, you're welcome to, but you can at least get a sense of what I've done just by looking at this video in terms of the data. So I'm going to show you a couple of things um, just about how to navigate to start off. So if you'll notice, for each one of these visualizations, there's an iframe. And that iframe allows you to do some things. So you have all these um, icons down here. And if you touch on those, I'll show you what they can do in a minute. But they essentially will isolate uh, that ecology into one of those modalities, right? So from left to right, we have, of the colored ones, we have the cognitive light bulb, the I, which represents visual modality. We have the AZ, which represents alphabetic textual um, aspects of practice. We have oral, which is O-R-A-L, spoken. That's the neon green. We have the red, oral, as in like listening, we can hear it, A-U-R-A-L. We have touch, tactile, is in orange. We have blue, which is kinesthetic, so anytime things that movement is making knowledge or important for information, you, you'll see that one there. And we also have green for spatial temporal. So again, you can isolate to see within any visualization what modalities are present or how it connects between nodes. So the other key thing you'll see is that for each visualization, there's nodes and then there's links, which are the colored lines. If you hover over the nodes, you'll be able to see a specific kind of thing, what that is. So in this case, you'll see that I'm hovering over a node, and that's face-to-face. -face. So that's um, you know Chief Burke noting that he might have a face-to-face -face communication with a crew to give them a piece of information. We can see that this is um, visual, and it's also oral. O-R-A-L, spoken. So he's using those kind of mediums to have that face-to-face -face communication with the crew. Additionally, if we go down here, there's some other things that we can see. Um, one more note about the, no the links that I'd like to really prioritize is that you'll see that some of them are in dark, they're non-dashed, and some are dashed. And that differentiates whether or not this work is more mediational or more communicative in nature. Spinozzi, uh, Hart Davidson, and Zachary have written a bit about the difference between mediational and communicative work, and I've cited and referenced it in this web text. So if you want to see more about that, I, I would really recommend you to go over there and see those aspects of practice. Um, but it's something that's significant. The key takeaway is that communicative often tend to be transactional, interpersonal, genres or practices where mediational work is more personal or intrapersonal. Uh, it's not work that necessarily is circulating, but it's work that's doing important activity within um, rhetorical and literate contexts. All right, so the other thing you can do is you can turn on all of the text caption labels by clicking this black label button right next to the home. Or you can turn them off by going back home. If you're in a label mode, you can click through and isolate and they'll continue to stay on. If you want to turn them back on and go back, you're going to have to get, go back home and then click on that mode again. And then you'll be, you'll be in hover mode. So I'm going to start with this hover mode to just talk about one other aspect of Chief Burks. And also you'll see that this is part of how the Orderville network visualization is also built. But what I've done is there's a C, uh, key central node. And in Chief Burke, it's incident management. And you'll notice that off of that, that there's three key segments of practice that we can look at. So we have a planning segment, a communication segment, and an observe segment. And so from those three segments, we see segments of practice. That's one of the things that I've done in terms of this. Um, I've 
brought all those segments together because I'm only going to show you two data visualizations. So I wanted to kind of show you robust ones. But it, they're a lot easier to work with um, by kind of looking at the segments instead of combining them because when you get so many nodes together, it gets a little bit overwhelming. Again, I can go back here and, you know, we can look at this and be like, wow, there's a lot going on there. And it's going to take some time to work through that. And that's okay. So what I want to do now is I've kind of given you some of the basic kind of how to interact and work with these things. Um, I want to show you another example of something. All right, so this is a Lieutenant Lamb segment. So again, I just was mentioning like you can segment these these larger ecologies into pieces and then analyze them that way. And I find that to be actually, to me, the most helpful way to kind of work through these. And then you can put them back together and get a kind of a bigger picture of things. And so zooming in and zooming out um, is kind of something you can do in terms of how you capture the data and show it. And so I think that's something I want to kind of stress here in this introductory um, introdu introductory thing. But so as we see, like from a node as we move out, so the center node in this visualization is Lieutenant Lamb. And from Lieutenant Lamb, we see that there's a like a radio communications that has some additional activity going off of it. And then we have managing accountability that has has off of it. So another way of thinking about things is that there's hierarchies. And so the further away from a center node you go, you're getting into deeper practices that are kind of nested to some extent. So if we get way down here, we're going to have to say like this connects up to here in some way. It makes sense when we talk through it in this kind of a way. So from Lieutenant Lamb out to managing accountability, we see some mediational work going on. It's cognitive and it's visual work. He's thinking about and looking at visual tags in order to manage the accountability of the crews. And he's using a specific tool to manage accountability. That tool is the accountability board. Now what we also see is that there's this weird other node over here and what's happened is I've misspelled accountability in this one and so it's not connecting as it should. This should simply be one visual node from um, here to there. Um, also this is a textual text-based node so we see Lieutenant Lamb has his own tag on accountability board and then from that board we also have team two. So team two consists of where the tags that are there represent the crew. So we have Firefighter Laramore's tag, we have Firefighter Lynn's tag, and we have Firefighter Ennis's tag. So when the firefighters arrive on the scene, they organize into a crew or they're assigned into a crew. They put their tags on the board, and then that allows that incident manager to keep track of who is where. And in this case, it's Lieutenant Lamb. So we kind of moved it out, and we moved it back in to walk through how that part of practice is, is organized. We can also see Lieutenant Lamb is doing some other things besides managing accountability. So this is, again, we zoom back into that center node. Here's the key things that Lieutenant Lamb noted he's doing during this, this evolution. He's supervising the drill. He's making sure everybody's doing things safe. Again, he's using um, some mental and cognitive frameworks, and he's using visual observation. He's reading smoke. So there's spatial temporal mediational um, link there, and there's also a visual mediational link there as well for reading smoke. He's monitoring the scene, he's listening, and he's watching as he's doing that. So we see a red and a pink fuchsia visual mediational link there. He's monitoring crews on the outside, he's monitoring crews working inside. And note again, we're listening for oral and we're looking for visual cues. And Lieutenant Lamb's also engaging in radio communications. And finally, he's looking at his watch in order to keep track of the time of the incident. And perhaps in some cases, how long has this crew that's doing a search been exposed to hazard? Are they getting near the point where they might be running out of luck? Uh, running out of air? Are they getting near the point where I want to call on the radio and check in on them? And it, so 
off the radio comms, we have giving orders, receiving cruises, messages, and monitoring the radio. And again, we see some mediational links that are colored red here and blue here. And, and so this is just a good way to give you a quick, easy sense of what is involved in each one of these links in the nodes so that you can apply them and work through the visualizations in your own way. Um, okay, last thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to navigate back to here. So you also have some other choices to make while you're working here and navigating through the thing. So I'm going to zoom in again. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can zoom in and again, you can hover over the visualizations to get a sense of what's there. Cool. I'm not going to walk through and read everything here. Um, I'll do that. I'll save that for one of the walkthroughs where I talk through what I think these visualizations can help us see potentially. But um, the other thing I wanted to again kind of remind you of is you can turn on the labels or turn off the labels with these two keys. The black home key will turn them off and then you can navigate between these and then you can visually hover to see what is there off those key nodes. And so by kind of breaking them into this simple um, icon that are mode based, you can kind of get a sense. And it takes some time and some dwelling with these visualizations to really appreciate the complexity that's here. Um, the additional thing that you can do is if you want to look at, isolate that visualization in its own window, you can click in the caption and you're able to do that. And I've also offered an oral walkthrough of the data structure um, as a transcript. So there's a lot of ways to kind of interact with these that I've offered audiences to make them more accessible, but also to kind of think about how we might visualize and work with visual data in a range of ways. I think by manipulating it in all these different ways, one of the cool things is, is that we can get a better sense of the data itself. Um, making these recordings helps me to become more aware of how I might talk about certain aspects of practice, for instance. Thank you for your time.